Hi kids, it's Mr. Larry and I've got another story. This one is Henry the Impatient Heron. Hmm, an impatient heron. <laughs> the author is Donna Love. She wrote the book. The illustrator is Christina Wald. She made the pictures and the pictures are great. Take a real good look. Okay, here we go. Henry, Henry was a young heron, a great blue heron that lived near a pond. His long thin legs were great for wading and his long pointed bill was great for catching fish. But the young heron had a problem. He couldn't stand still. Other herons stood still for hours, legs stiff, bodies rigid, necks poised to strike out at a fish or a salamander or a tasty frog that might swim by. They stood still so long that the fish and the salamanders and the frogs forgot the herons were there. Have you seen herons like this just standing so still? Maybe there's some around where you live. But the young heron was impatient and had been that way since he hatched. The other chicks in the rookery, that's the place where the herons have their nests, the other chicks in the rookery waited patiently in their nests high in the tree for mom or dad to return with food. Henry hopped and squawked about, too anxious to stand still. His brother and sister said, stand still, you're stepping on our heads but he couldn't. When Henry's mother or father returned, he hopped about some more. Stand still, his parents pleaded, but he just couldn't. Finally, when he was so hungry he could hardly stand it, he got a little bit to eat. It's not that he didn't try. Many times he practiced, perched on the side of his nest, but soon his legs would begin to twitch and his neck would begin to itch. Then he'd raise his long leg to scratch his back or flap his wings to stretch. In his nest, it didn't matter. His mother and father brought food, but soon he would have to be on his own. Soon he would have to feed himself. When it was time to fly, the young heron liked the way the wind felt beneath his wings. He wasn't afraid. He had always lived high in a tree. With all his hopping and flapping, his large wings had grown strong. At the pond, his brother and sister stayed near his mother. I can see him over there under the trees at the edge, see? So. He watched a mallard family parade by. Mallards are those ducks. Look at that family parading by. A doe and her fawn walked to the lake shore to take a drink. Then he spied a dragonfly and followed it through the cattails to a red-winged blackbird's nest. There was so much to see and do at the pond that Henry forgot about his family until his tummy began to grumble and rumble. He looked for his mother, his sister and brother, but they were nowhere to be found. That's when he knew he was alone and he would have to feed himself. I can do this, he thought. After all, how hard can it be to catch a fish? He waited in the water and looked and looked. His gray head darted this way and that, watching below for a shiny fish to bolt between his skinny legs. But none did. 
His twisting neck and bobbing head frightened the fish away. Hmm. On the shore, a little heron spotted a salamander. Oh, what a tasty treat. He could move fast when he wanted to. He ran towards the salamander with great speed, but the salamander saw him and quickly darted away. His bill hit the bank where the salamander had been, and all he got was a mouthful of sand. Yuck! I'm so hungry, thought the impatient heron. I'll eat the next thing that moves. Then he spied a plump little frog sitting on a lily pad nearby. Just the thing, Henry thought, and he took a great big leap. The frog jumped away just in time. Henry followed, his long legs running, wings flapping, but the frog jumped again. Henry ran smack into a log and fell backwards into the water. Kersplash! Looking up to see what he hit, the little heron saw it wasn't a log at all. It was a heron. And not just any heron, it was the great blue heron, the heron of all herons. Oh, pardon me, sir. I thought you were a log, the little heron said with a bow. You are quite excused, said the great blue heron with a kingly, kindly voice. After all, I am the king of camouflage. Oh, I bet you know about camouflage, don't you? Yeah. The king of camouflage? The young heron asked. Oh, yes, said the king. I can stand still so long that even I think I have turned into a log. The impatient heron hung his head and said, I wish I could stand still. I'm so hungry I could eat a log. The great blue heron chuckled and shook his head. You know, he told the young heron, when I was little, I couldn't stand still either. And then I learned a trick. Henry peeked up hopefully and asked, what did you do? With a knowing look, the great blue heron said, the trick is to look like a stick. Look like a stick, the young heron asked. Yes, said the king, a fish is afraid of a heron, but not afraid of a stick. When you stand very still, the fish will think your legs are sticks. Oh, and then Henry asked, may I use your trick? Be my guest, said the king and off he flew with a kick and a swish. The sun was beginning to set in the sky, but the impatient little heron knew he had to try. He found an inlet that looked like a good place to catch a frog, a salamander, or fish. And then he stood still and thought and thought, I must think like a fish. I must look like a stick. His legs grew tired. His feet got cold. And yet, he stood quite still. Just as the last of the light of day sank beneath the hill, a fish swam by. Without batting an eye, Henry's neck darted forward with strength all its own. When he lifted his head, a large fish squirmed in his bill. I caught one, he thought, and then he swallowed the fish. Suddenly his stomach was quiet and full. 
So he flew to a perch and preened and preened, cleaned up his feathers, very proud of himself. When he grew tired, he put his head under a wing and happily went to sleep. The impatient heron had learned to stand still. Well, here's some more things to think about. Lots of things to think about. You may want to go back and read the story again and look at all those great pictures. And then maybe come back and look at this and maybe talk it over with somebody. There's this page and another one. So take a look when you can. But in the meantime, I've got to head out and work in the garden. So everybody take really good care. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.